Welcome to Gamma Help Videos. Today we're going to learn how to deploy a collection using the Create Portal on Gamma. So you can either head to the main site at gamma.io and then click on Create or head directly to create.gamma.io. Here you'll need to connect your Stacks Wallet. You can do this by clicking on the Connect Stacks Wallet button in the top right hand corner. Once you click it, your wallet will pop up and you can select the account you'd like to use. After that, you can scroll down and read the various information about deploying your collection. Once you've done that, you can click on Start Creating. Here, you'll receive some more detailed information about each step for setting up your collection. Once you've read through it and you're ready, you'll click Continue. Here, you'll decide on which collection best suits your needs. For large collections, a mint experience, and profile picture style collections, we recommend you select Public Mint. You can read through how Public Mint contracts work, and we also recommend that you read through the important mentions about a Public Mint contract. Once you've read them and you're happy with that, you'll select Continue. Now you'll be required to fill in your collection details, such as the collection name, the collection description, we also require an email address. This email address will remain private. You can then select which category suits your collection best, either collectibles, fine art, photography, music, or other. There are then some extra details which you can fill out, such as your website, Twitter, or Discord. And although these say optional, we do recommend that you fill in one or more of them to attract and gain trust from your future potential collectors. If you would like the Mint royalties to go to another address, different to the one in which you're deploying the contract with, you can enter that here. This address will also have some extra admin privileges on certain public functions. After that, you may click continue. You will now be prompted to upload your media files. The first thing that you need to do is upload a logo. So you'll click directly onto drag and drop or click to browse. After selecting the file you want, you can click open and that will drop it into the correct place. The next part is uploading your assets. You can either drop the whole folder in or select the files that you'd like to use. Please be aware that once the files are added, that is the order in which they'll appear in your collection. You can then preview to ensure that you're happy with it by clicking the forward arrow all the way through your collection. As you can see, the file name is referred to as all the faces one. However, if you had specific file names that you'd like to use, you can click this tab and now you can see that it's called Earthy, the name which I had given the file. The next step can really set your collection apart if you need to use attributes. Please be aware that you can either upload a CSV file or a JSON file. Make sure to read through all of the information to understand it correctly. You can also download a sample file. I'm going to show you a file which pertains to this practice collection which I'm using for the demo. This is a demo CSV file. You can see that the umbrella term for the traits is across row one, such as background, head, mouth, eyes and power. So therefore, row two relates to ID number one. I have five NFTs in my collection. So I have from rows two down to row six. So two relates to one, three relates to two, and so on. You can see that all of mine have the same background. Some of my heads are round and some are oblong. There are different mouth traits and different eye traits. Sometimes there are attributes which you cannot see in the NFT. These may impact other parts of your project and unlock other features which you may be including. You'll also notice that two of these rows don't have a name. If you leave a row blank, it will come up as none as an attribute, and this can be done on purpose. Once you are ready, select the file and add it. Make sure to check that it is for the exact number of assets which you require. Once it's all correct, you may click continue. The next thing you need to do is define your mint settings. So the first thing you'll allocate is your price. If you wanted it to be a free mint, you would place zero stacks. 
As an example, I'm going to set mine at 35 stacks. You can also select other payment options in other currencies available on stacks, such as the city coins, USDA, XBTC, Banana, Slime, and Alex. You can also have your token being able to be minted using Mega. You can also define how many NFTs somebody can claim during a transaction. Every number that you click becomes an option. So at the minimum it's one, you can click on two, three, perhaps you don't want them to be able to mint four and you just want them to go directly to five. So then any number that you pick defines how many NFTs they can mint in a single transaction. So if I left my claim options like this, somebody would be able to claim up to five NFTs in a single mint. The next aspect of the Create Portal is the Mint Pass. The Mint Pass determines the amount of pre-mints or pre-sale mints that a wallet can mint prior to the sale going to the public. You can download a sample file, which we will go through to see how this Mint Pass should look. This is an example Mint Pass CSV. So in one column, you'll have the wallet address. And in the second column, you'll have the number of mints which have been allocated to this wallet address for the pre-mint or the pre-sale. So you'll notice some of the wallet addresses can mint one and others can mint more. On some occasions, the mint pass allocation will be such that there are no mints available to the public. However, on other occasions, the mint pass will be for a portion of the mints available and then afterwards, you'll be able to initiate the public sale. This is all able to be managed by the wallet address that deployed the collection in the Manage Collections section, which you'll be able to view in another video. The next option allows you to include an AirDrop CSV. We're going to have a look at an example AirDrop CSV file. This is an example CSV file. You'll notice that all of the addresses are in one column, and there is nothing in the second column like the mint pass file. That's because the position of the address entered relates to the ID number that this address will receive in the airdrop. So if you'd like to enable your airdrop prior to the mint going live, you'll need to set your mint at disabled on deployment. That way you can deploy the airdrop and for example, this address will receive ID number one, this address will receive ID number two, and this same address will receive ID number three. So if you have specific IDs in mind for people, for example, say the team is meant to receive IDs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You will place their addresses next to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If you wanted it to be more random, you would place the addresses in in a more random order. But please be aware that if an address is meant to receive more than one airdrop, you'll need to put that address in more than once. So please be aware that the order in which you place the addresses in the airdrop file will relate to the order of the ID numbers that these addresses receive. So for example, say you deploy your airdrop once a mint has gone live and you're already up to ID 50. Once the airdrop confirms, then the first address on your airdrop will receive ID 51 and the second address on your airdrop will receive ID 52 and so on. So it's important to decide when you're deploying your airdrop, the order in which the addresses are listed and always double and triple checking that it's correct before you deploy the contract, as this cannot be edited. The airdrop transaction is only able to be called on by the wallet address that deploys the collection through the Create Portal. The next field determines whether your mint is enabled or disabled on deployment. If it is enabled, people will be able to mint as soon as your collection launches. If it is disabled, then they will only be able to mint once you enable it. This can be used when you have a specific mint date in mind, but always be aware that the time might be affected slightly by the block times that day once you have sent the transaction to enable your mint. You can also set the maximum amount of mints per address. You can also mint your NFT revealed or hidden. When it's revealed, the minter will see their NFT as soon as the transaction is confirmed and the NFT arrives in their wallet. If it is hidden, they will mint a placeholder NFT and the reveal will only occur once you upload the assets at a later time and then enable the reveal. Once you have done that and you selected the correct option, you may then click continue. It is now time to review your collection. 
you need to ensure all of the details are correct. The logo, the name of your collection and the description, all of your NFTs and their names, as well as their attributes are correct. If they all are, you can then click on continue. You must now read through the Gamma Creator Terms of Use. It is very important that you read through these carefully and understand them. Once you've read through them, you can click on these three boxes to show that you understand each part of the terms. You may then click continue. Here, you're ready to upload your files to IPFS and deploy your contract to the mainnet. Simply click publish. This may take a minute. Your wallet transaction will pop up. You can scroll down, click confirm, and once that transaction is confirmed on the blockchain, well done, you will have deployed a public mint contract on Gamma. Thanks for watching. More help is always available at support.gamma.io.